Join me as I explore the dark truth of rideshare fake accounts. Together, we can shine a light on the shadow over ride-sharing and work towards a safer, more secure future for all users. According to a fantastic article from Wired, Priscilla Barbosa, a Brazilian national, came to America and found herself in a difficult situation. She had come to the country with dreams of a better life, but the reality was far more challenging than anticipated. She wanted to work and help pay for her expenses, but could not secure traditional employment without the proper legal documentation, leaving her in a precarious financial situation. Desperate to make ends meet, Barboza began exploring alternative ways to earn money. During this search, she stumbled upon the world of rideshare as a way to make money. The concept seemed simple. Rent a verified Uber or Lyft account from someone registered on the platform and use it to drive passengers. At first, this seemed like a perfect solution. She could earn an income by driving under someone else's identity, bypassing the need for legal documentation. The arrangement allowed her to work and support herself, albeit temporarily. Initially, Barboza rented Uber and Lyft accounts from individuals who were already registered on the platforms. This provided her with a temporary solution to her financial woes. She handed over cash to these account owners who allowed her to use their verified profiles to pick up and drop off passengers. This arrangement, however, was not without its challenges. While it allowed her to earn money, it also came with significant risks. The account owners demanded a substantial portion of her earnings, leaving her with less than she had hoped. Despite these challenges, Barboza continued to drive under borrowed identities. Before each shift, she adjusted the seat and mirrors, preparing herself for another night of navigating the city streets. The work was grueling, but it was a means to an end. However, this arrangement was short-lived. The constant pressure of sharing her earnings with the account owners and the fear of being caught began to take its toll. Barbosa realized that this was not a sustainable way to make a living. The risks of renting accounts became increasingly apparent. Barbosa often looked worried at her phone screen and concerned about the possibility of being discovered. The fear of losing her only source of income loomed large. The financial strain was also significant. Account owners demanded a substantial portion of her earnings, leaving her with barely enough to cover her expenses. The constant exchange of money reminded her of her precarious situation. Determined to find a more sustainable and profitable solution, Barboza, a resourceful and intelligent woman, began researching online for ways to create legitimate driver accounts. She spent hours poring over forums and websites, looking for loopholes and methods to bypass the system. Barbosa's determination to secure a stable income drove her to explore increasingly sophisticated methods of deception. She became more adept at navigating the complexities of the rideshare platforms, finding new ways to exploit the system to her advantage. As she delved deeper into rideshare fraud, Barbosa's operations became more elaborate. She began to understand the intricacies of the rideshare industry, learning how to manipulate the system to maximize her earnings. The busy nature of the job with its constant flow of passengers provided ample opportunities for her to refine her techniques. Over time, Barbosa's efforts paid off. She managed to create a driver account that appeared legitimate, complete with a high rating and positive reviews. This newfound success allowed her to operate with greater confidence, knowing that she had a more stable and profitable source of income. Despite the risks and challenges, Barbosa's entry into the world of rideshare fraud marked a turning point in her life. It was a testament to her resilience and resourcefulness as she navigated the ever-growing challenges of her situation with determination and focus. Her journey was far from over, but she had found a way to survive and thrive in a challenging and uncertain world. Barbosa discovered a critical vulnerability within the rideshare systems. Both Uber and Lyft relied heavily on social security numbers for identity verification. While robust in theory, the process had a flaw. 
the platforms did not consistently cross-reference the provided SSN with other databases. This oversight created an opportunity for exploitation. Barbosa and others like her could use stolen or fabricated SSNs to create accounts. These accounts, though fraudulent, would appear legitimate to the rideshare companies. The lack of thorough verification allowed these accounts to slip through the cracks. This loophole became a cornerstone for many fraudulent activities within the rideshare ecosystem. Using stolen or lost IDs became another avenue for creating fake accounts. This practice has grown exponentially, driven by the increasing demand for fake identities in various illegal activities. The dark web, a hidden part of the internet, has become a bustling marketplace for these stolen identities. However, some IDs were accumulated by taking pictures of the driver licenses when delivering items that required the driver to verify the customer. Barbosa and her associates acquired these IDs through various illicit means. They often worked with a network of criminals who specialized in stealing personal information. These criminals targeted individuals through phishing scams, data breaches, and even physical theft. Online marketplaces, often operating on the dark web, became hubs for this trade. These platforms are designed to be anonymous making it difficult for law enforcement to track down the perpetrators. The reality is, it is not that hard to access the dark web. With a little knowledge, anyone can do it. Sellers would list stolen identities, complete with detailed information about the victim. These marketplaces offered a smorgasbord of stolen identities. Buyers could choose from various options, including driver's licenses, passports, and social security cards. Each listing would include information about the quality of the ID and the type of information it contained. A complete set of documents with matching information could fetch a high price. These sets were precious because they allowed the buyer to create a functional fake identity. These stolen identities became valuable commodities in the world of rideshare fraud. Barbosa used the stolen information to create fake driver accounts on rideshare platforms bypassing background checks and other security measures. They provided the necessary documentation to create seemingly legitimate accounts. Once the fake accounts were set up, Barbosa would rent them out to others for a percentage of their earnings. The impact of these fraudulent activities extends far beyond just financial loss. For the victims whose identities have been stolen, the consequences are often devastating. Imagine waking up one day to find your credit score in the toilet, loans you never took out, and tax returns filed under your name. The emotional toll is immense, leading to stress, anxiety, and a sense of vulnerability. For legitimate rideshare drivers, the presence of fake accounts means increased competition and a tarnished reputation for the platform they rely on. Passengers, too, are at risk. They may unknowingly get into a vehicle driven by someone who hasn't undergone proper background checks, putting their safety in jeopardy. Law enforcement agencies are continuously battling this growing menace, but the anonymity of the internet makes it a challenging task. The dark web's hidden nature provides a safe haven for criminals to operate with minimal risk of being caught. International cooperation and advanced cyber forensic techniques are crucial in combating this issue, but progress is slow and often reactive rather than proactive. In conclusion, the issue of fake accounts and ride sharing is a growing concern that affects both drivers and passengers. We need to stay vigilant and report any suspicious activities. What do you think about this problem? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more insights on this and other pressing issues. You can watch some of our other videos here. This is Steve from the Penny Stupid channel. See ya.